What's up, boxing fans? Oh, shoot, this camera almost fell. What's up, boxing fans? This is the Rope of Dope Report. I'm your host, Chris Carlson. Make sure you check out Rope of Dope Radio for articles um, to listen to the show. You can also uh, check out the Fantasy Boxing standings there and press releases, so you make sure you check that out. Um, last night, we had a, a lot of recap for the Marcus Maidana and Eric Morales. Great fight and all the upsets that happened over the weekend. We also had two prospects on, so make sure you check that out. We also had a debate and prediction segment. And uh, we had a lot of people call in and, and kind of give their takes on the fight. I'm going to talk about the, the three fights that I'm going to talk about today. Um, I'm going to do two more videos with this one. So um, let's get right into this. Uh, this one is for the, um, it's a prediction video for the Mircon Paul uh, McCloskey um, fight coming up this weekend. Um, it's going to be in the UK, in England, I believe. Um, Amir Khan is coming off a great win versus uh, Marcus Maidana, a guy that everybody wanted him to fight because of the power and the aggression. And, uh, you know, he got tested, even though he looked great early and midway through in the 10th round and a couple rounds there. He looked really bad, obviously, especially the 10th round. He looked really bad on the ropes there, but he survived. And credit to Amir Khan, he fought a great, you know, fight. Um, he took the fight over pretty much after the 10th round and started landing punches again. So, um, overall, I thought it was a good performance. He keeps improving. Um... You know, he's there first, he uses his jab and his speed and, and, you know, that type of thing. But I also, I think that he needs to still improve on defense. Um, when he was hurt, you know, he was covering up, but it, it was no rhyme or reason to his covering up. He was just covering up and still leaving himself open to hooks and, and, and uppercuts and body blows and all that type of thing. So he's still improving. It'll be really interesting to see him. Um, in his next couple fights, not just this fight, but in his fight after this, if he if he does beat uh, McCloskey, um, without Alex Ariza, who we had on the show, if you want to listen to the interview, go to Blog Talk Radio forward slash Rope It Over Radio. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he does without him as well. But um, no matter what, it, it was a great performance, a really fun fight to watch. Um, obviously. Um, Paul McCloskey is is not as well known, not not even close, and definitely not known over in the states here. I know a lot of UK people, uh, you know, definitely have seen him a lot more. I've only seen, I'll be honest with you, I've only seen a couple of uh, of his fights. Um, his second to last fight, I watched most of that fight. Um, I, I'll be honest, you know, McCloskey's got some talent. He's got some some pretty good hand speed. He's got some skills. Um, he's a southpaw, and he kind of likes using that shoulder, that shoulder roll. He keeps his hands down. He likes the jab. He's got a pretty good jab. Hooks, I notice his right and his left hook is pretty good, especially his right hook. Um, just in general, you know, he, like I said, he's a skilled fighter. He, he's kind of slick. Like I said, he, he likes to kind of combo on the outside and use that shoulder roll defense from the southpaw stance. Um... The thing is, he doesn't put his hands high enough. Now, I know a lot of people do that type of fight, like Mayweather the same way, you know, with the shoulder roll and Bernard Hopkins and, you know, the list goes on. Um, but there's people that can do it, and then there's people that can do it effectively. And then there's people that can do it effectively against top-level opponents. And at 140, Amir Khan is a top-level um, borderline elite fighter at this weight class. That's what we're going to find out here uh, very soon from Amir Khan. Um, so I think that Amir Khan's jab and his overall hand speed and his overall flurry, you know, he loves to flurry and throw combos and, uh, and win rounds that way. And so I think those, those will be the key. You know, I think the hand speed is going to be on a different level with McCloskey. I think overall... He's just going to be lost in there. I, I, I'm not saying that he has no shot to win the fight because, like I said, he does have some skills. He does defend himself. So, you know, who knows? Maybe if he throws his jab and, and stays bitty, busy and, and, and lets Amir Khan come to him, maybe he could have some success and win some early rounds, you know? I think that's his best bet is winning early rounds. And maybe his awkward style in the southpaw, maybe that will cause some problems. I just think Amir is actually not going to come right to him. I think he's going to stand in the middle of the ring, try to keep it in the middle, 
and, and I think that you know as McCloskey works around him, he's going to try to work on the outside. I'm not sure if that's going to work. Like I said, I think he is pretty slick and he's got some skills, but it's one thing to do it against certain fighter and then another to do it against a top level fighter so I think he will be exposed his defense will be exposed even though it looks good and he moves his head and like I said he, he does the shoulder roll and all that he leaves himself open especially when he throws the hook but just in general he still leaves himself open and putting your hands down in front of a guy with the hand speed of Amir Khan is going to be a big mistake. So I think it'll come down to that. Like I said, I could see some early awkwardness in his style and his slickness causing some um, problems. Maybe not problems, but just allowing McCloskey to have some success against Amir Khan if he throws that jab in the right hand and, and, and stays on the move. You know, maybe it will take him a second to catch up to him. You know what I mean? I, I just can't see Amir Khan. I can only see Amir Khan really putting on the pressure and coming to him so he can use that slickness once he's hit him enough to where he's going to try to maybe finish him. I think Amir Khan will come out and be first, jab, flurry, and get out of there. Just in and out, in and out. And, and, I, and I, see him, I see him actually knocking McCloskey down and, and maybe out. There's a possibility, um, a good possibility, because he's never faced a top-level guy like this. Um, you could say Amir Khan's never faced as slick as fighter as this. He he, he faced Malinaji. Um, Malinaji, you know, besides the first round landed some jabs, Malinaji didn't do much besides getting the head, hitting the head. And, and I think, like I said, the hands down, even though he's got the shoulder there, I think the hands down in Amir Khan being first is going to be key to that fight um, with the speed. So I'm going to go Amir Khan either late TKO or KO. But I wouldn't doubt if it went a decision. You know what I mean? Um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But I, but I do see Amir Khan winning this fight. And I see him winning going away to an extent. Something like uh, minimum 8-4. I really think that he's going to, once he gets his style figured out, there might be some awkward moments. There might be some success early for McCloskey. But I think Amir Khan wins uh, by late TKO or KO or decision. Peace.